All right, welcome to a conscious live clip. It's dinner time, and we're having uh, slow roasted pork bellies with um, a Worcestershire and balsamic sort of onion glazy thing. Um, so I just sealed the outside of my pork bellies so that they'd be uh, delicious and uh, all the keep all the juice and the moisture in. And now I'm just very, very, very slowly. Um, uh, fried up some onions and some coconut oil and the balsamic and the Worcestershire sauce. So you get lots of flavour coming out of them. Just spread that through the pan there. A couple of cloves of garlic in there as well. Now I've got these cooking uh, on a really low temp, about 70 degrees, because uh, Stacy won't be home for a couple of hours. So we'll put them back in the oven. Hopefully we um, preserve some of the nutrients that we lost when we did the outside frying. So today, my question is, are you repressed? Now what do I mean by that? Basically you can tell if you're repressed if you can, if you can't walk out into the street right now in the main street of your town and make up a silly song and sing it at the top of your lungs just because you feel like it, then you get a pretty good chance that you're, you're repressed in who you are. Okay, you're holding something back. Now, this is a problem. If you think about um, Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, okay, it basically is saying that matter is, is energy and vice versa. Okay, well, your thoughts have an energy, obviously. All right? I mean, they, they exist as a brainwave or, or an electrical signal of some sort. So they are a literal energy component or a vibratory component, and therefore they are matter. Now, if you don't express how you feel in certain ways, okay, then that matter or that energy gets stored in your body in some way. Right? Now it may become a, um, a sore shoulder, all right? it may become a, a feeling in the pit of your stomach like when you get nervous, all right? and, and it may even become later down the track like a cancerous growth or a tumour or some sort of um, um, you know, terminal type illness. All right? And I think that's one of the biggest problems in the world we live in today is that people aren't ready just to bust out and go nuts. You know, they're all so um, routine and uniform and it's a bad thing to sing at work and I often call my clients at work to organise appointments and I, I think they're angry at me or they're, you know, they're different people because they sound so um, suited up and, and repressed in their ties and suits. So, so we really need to, as a society, particularly in the West, start to get these things out. And it's easy to, an easy example to think about health-wise is, if you look at a child, like I have a six-year-old brother uh, named Jack, and he will, he will watch a movie or listen to a song, but he won't just sit and, and uh, let it go into him. He'll actually act it out and make hand movements and dance around to it, make up his own words, um, add noises, etc. Because that's how he feels while he's listening to it. It makes him feel that way and he just acts on it. I don't know at what point we, we um, you know, shame that out of ourselves, but it gets done. So by the time you finish high school, unless you're wearing the same brand name shorts as your mates or you know, have a Prada bag, then, then you really feel uncomfortable walking around with people. And it's total crap. It shouldn't be that way. You know, if you feel like busting out the song while you're walking through a shopping centre, you should do it. Um, I'm, I'm often, one of the, my favourite things about Stacey is that, if, and I'm probably bad for it because I, I sometimes don't, don't improve or I give her a non improving look, but if we can be walking through the middle of Melbourne City and she'll hear a, a song playing in a, at the front of a shop and she'll bust out into a song and try and dance around me and, you know, salsa with me and stuff. And I'm, I'm still getting over my impression, so I sometimes don't play along and she gets, you know, crappy about it. But, but she's really doing the right thing. I'm the one with the problem. I'm the one trying to stop myself acting out, even though I have this energy that wants to do that. So, so this is a problem, again, particularly in the West. Um, and I, I know most people aren't going to start with just walking out and launching into song. So we can think of some other, some other ways that we can, uh, as a society, start to bridge the gap between you know, conformist thinking and not acting out and not being who you are. And being, you know, being able to express yourself in a way that you feel comfortable with, but still gets that, that inner energy out. Um, so there's a few good ways. Obviously, singing and dance are great ways, okay? 
And, and when you do this, you should sing or dance according to how you feel and not according to the moves, right? So um, I often catch myself out when I go to a club, or which is not often, or if I'm dancing around the house, and I try and do moves like Stacey does because they look so good. But they just crap on me. That's not how my body expects to move. I'm twice their height, I'm twice their size, and it doesn't work for me. I don't enjoy the dancing because of that. But if I just dance like no one's here and no one's going to see me, and often there's no one here to see me because I don't want to be seen, so that lets me get that, that feeling out, whatever it might be. Okay, so dancing's one way. Um, song or, or toning or noise is another way, all right? Um, the, the, in Eastern practice, they've long known the benefits of toning or sound healing. Okay, you don't need any special equipment for this. You can just use your own voice, all right? And the, the music scale, um, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. If you can tone those in, in a particular, um, in, in their particular frequency, then that has a healing and release effect on the body. So for example, you'd go, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, all the way up through. Okay. Now, this has a, an effect of releasing the energy from your body. So if you get a really good, do, then you feel nice and, and my body, my chest is tingling and my abs are tingling. Okay, it lets that that um, that repression or whatever that energy is out. And also the frequency that that do resonates at um, has a healing effect on certain parts of our body because basically our cells, which are just energy, like matter and energy, like anything else, our cells are vibrating at a particular frequency in different regions of our body. So if you get the right frequency through the sound, then you heal a certain aspect of your body. So toning is a great way, and it doesn't have to be one of those tones, you can make your own one up, or you can just go up and down through um, a vowel sound, for example, like an, an A, you could go A, up and down through, oh, it tingles again. So. Um, toning is a great way to do it, whether it be a do, re, mi, or whether it be an a, e, i, o, u, as, as a, a, a vowel sound. Um, another way is, is creative drawing, okay, or pastelling or painting, alright. And this is another great, this is really great, I've, I have a fantastic time drawing. The important thing is you don't try and draw anything good, alright. You're not creating masterpieces here, you're not trying to, uh, you know, sell this as, as a Van Gogh ripoff. This is purely just to, to express what you're feeling inside or any pictures you have in your head. Okay, so um, it will be quite relaxing and very um, enjoyable if you just scribble what's out. You know, and in fact, I try and use um, more simple tools like crayons and, and thick textures and stuff because you, you know you really can't draw a a beautifully styled piece of art if you're not using um, like very fine point markers or great you know paints. Use kids' paint. Use six dollar paint from a from a cheap store, and just splatter it out there in the in the mood that you're at in time. Okay, this will get it out, and it also um, it also gets the the feelings that you're having onto a paper or onto a, a canvas, so that you can see how you are at that particular moment in time. All right. Now, when I say see how you are, this isn't supposed to make sense to your brain, and in fact, that's the whole point of it. If you're looking at it and trying to interpret it mentally. You're going to run into a problem. You're going to find that it doesn't look how you want it. You'll start judging yourself. You'll think I'm a crap artist and you'll chuck the paints back in the drawer and, and never look at them again. When, when you store this energy, these feelings in your body, they're not stored as, as logical, linear information. Okay? Um, I often picture an outline of a body with all sorts of scribbles and, and you know, squiggly lines and dots and um, explosive bits and pieces. Okay? This is how it's being stored. It's, it's stored as, a, as a, a vibration or as a feeling or as a, um, as a kink or tightness or something like that. All right? So if you try and understand it with, with um, logic or linear thought, you're going to have a real hard time. The whole point of it is you, you let your body experience itself in color and in, in art. Okay? So you've got to get out of, that, out of that brain that's trying to work out how to do everything right and get into this is how I feel.